So thank you everyone for joining in. Uh, I appreciate it. My name is Prashant Gupta. I work with MTX Group as a lead consultant. I've been working in CPQ for some time now. I, although I've been a little away from it lately, but I have been working with the CPU systems for a while now, and I have a pretty love-hate kind of relationship with the product. I love what a beautifully developed product it is, what a amazing things can be done in such a short, such a small package and the power that it has. But on the other hand, I have a kind of a dislike the way this product is usually implemented for the clients. And a lot of time when this product is implemented, uh, there is a kind of misfit to what is usually required. And so there is, I feel there is an absolute need for some great CPQ architects in the industry. Uh, they that can that understand the product well, that have a good understanding of the product, and then can help clients make sure that it, there is a absolute need fit with the product and can make an implementation that is going to add value to their tech stack. That being said, the agenda is going to be pretty simple uh, for today. The agenda is going to be pretty simple. We'll keep it very short. Uh, let me be very, uh, let me start by saying that we are assuming that you guys have no idea on CPQ. We are going to start from the scratch. The product is very small, yet it's very large. There is so much that can be covered in a CPQ training that we cannot cover all of that. So what we'll do today is very, very basically we'll do a Salesforce. What is Salesforce CPQ? Why, where does it, where does it sit in any company's tech stack? And then we'll do a quick walkthrough and then we'll go to where to begin and the resources, right? So that's way, that's what we will, we will be doing. The agenda will keep the agenda pretty short and sweet. So what exactly is Salesforce CPQ? I, I assume at this point, and until you are living under some kind of rock, at this point, somebody, everybody must have heard CPQ stands for Configure, Product, and Code. But what does that even mean? So what does Configure means? Configure is basically ability to configure a quotation. First of all, let's go into what quotation is basically. So I don't know how many of you remember, but in the time when we used to buy desktops a lot, right? Nowadays, it's all about laptops. And even still, it does happen. But during the times of desktops, and I don't know how many of you remember the first time you bought your desktop. The way it used to work is you'll go to a shop and say, hey, you know, I want to buy, buy a desktop. Can you configure that for me? Right. So what they'll do is they'll give you a piece of paper which will have all the products. Right. So a monitor, a RAM, a hard disk and individual prices in front of them. And that they, it will not be a there is no contractual agreement on that paper. It's just a piece of paper with all the prices there. But this is supposed to be a quotation. That is quotation. A condition is a document that gives you the idea of what pricing is going to look like or what your order might look like. There is no contractual uh, agreement to it. There is no guarantee that you will buy. There, there is no guarantee that you will get those products. It's just a, a document that gives you the prices. So ability to configure that quotation as quickly as possible is what configuration is about. So what does that even mean? What that means is, for instance, let's say you're buying a desktop. Right, and you obviously have to configure a CPU. Now, in order to configure a CPU, you need a lot of stuff. For instance, a case, you need a CPU. Now, CPU can be in at least at the very least, at least in the two major variants, right? AMD is an Intel's, right? Then Intel has its own series, AMD has its own series. You can choose one out of all the different options, right? That is the ability to configure. You can choose the different uh, variations of RAMs. Now, this is where things get a little complicated. For instance, CPQ or the, you can choose only one CPQ and one computer. What if I decide I want to buy both Intel as well as an AMD? You can, but does it make sense? No, it won't make sense. Why? For a simple reason, because you can use only one at a time, but that's not true with RAM. You can actually decide if you have two RAM slots in your motherboard, you can actually decide to go for two channel RAMs. You can buy eight and eight uh, GB RAMs rather than buying a 16 GB RAM, a single 16 GB RAM. You still have a choice. You can still do that, but that increases the options, right? So this is where the complexity comes into picture. This is what configure, configuration gives you the ability to. On the, very quickly, you should be able to click few buttons and configure a quotation that fits within, and this is where we'll come to the next topic, right? Fits within some given criteria. okay? This is what configuration is. 
then pricing comes into picture. What exactly pricing is all about? Now, once you have configurations set up, you should be able to prepare the pricing very rapidly, very quickly. You shouldn't have to go through 100 Excel sheets and find, okay, what is the price of uh, CPQ i7 today? What is the price of CPQ i5 today? And then you go on writing those different prices. You have to go through different Excel sheets. Pricing is all about being able to get them. And then if you decide you want to do discounting on those products, let's say, okay, i7, if you're buying 12th generation, this is the cost. If you are buying 11th, we'll give you a 5% uh, discount because again, it's, it's an older version and we want to clear our stock. 10th generation, you can take it away for free. Nobody gives it free, but you get my point, right? That's where uh, pricing comes in. And quotation at the end of the day is the document. We have already talked about what quotation is and why do we need quotations? And the need for quotation every day is becoming more and more important. For instance, the best example I can give you is all of us have bought something from Amazon or Flipkart and other websites. Before you click on finally buy, you do see that screen, right? Where you have the product, the price, what date the product will reach you, approximation obviously, right? And the other details are there. Before you finally pay for it, that screen is your CP, your quotation. Now, it's not a document, it's just a screen, but still, at the end of the day, that's what quotation is all about. Because quotation gives client a very clear idea of what they, what agreement they are getting into, themselves into. What are they actually uh, agreeing to buy, what they'll get back in return, and more importantly, what is the price of that product, right? So that's what CPU stands for. Now the question is, where does CPU stand in a company's tech stack? And why do you need it suddenly, right? In the early years of industrialization, the companies used to have very limited products and very limited uh, catalog, right? And the pricing model used to be so simple. So if a company has, let's say five products and the pricing is very simple, you're selling, let's say cars, such a simple game. You have two cars variants that, is, that are available and one car is X, second car is Y. You go to a salesperson, salesperson tells you, you know what, I have two cars that I can sell you. One is for an X price, second is Y price. The maximum discount I can give you is 10% on both of them. We are done. Simple as that. The world is changing today. Things have changed. To begin with, the pricing models have changed dramatically over the last few years. Especially with the onset of uh, software industry, pricing models have changed. For instance, perpetual licenses. Perpetual licenses was the, probably the first thing that came in with uh, pricing model changes. Now, the thing with perpetual licenses is you do buy an asset, you am buying a software, but the thing is my company also has, so the company that is selling it to me also has to take into account when they're making the price of it, that they will be able to maintain this product at the end of life. So if I buy, I mean, we used to buy Windows XP, right? And Windows XP was at least in usage 15 to 20 years. So let's assume, a uh, very small amount of, let's say, assume that it was working for 10 years. Now for 10 long years, there was an entire software industry team. There were entire software team that was working on Windows XP, keeping it updated, keeping it safe, making sure all the bugs are fixes, making sure all the, any vulnerabilities that are found are fixes, are fixed uh, on time. That takes money. But when, you're, when they were selling X, uh, Windows XP, they had to make sure that there is that budget available in the price because they won't get any money after that. Once they have sold it, it's, it's gone, it, it's done. That's the only money you ever get, but you continuously have to keep that in, keep uh, that amount with you. You also always have to keep supporting that product. So you need budget for that. So that's where perpetual lenses became a kind of difficult, a little different. Then from perpetual licenses, we came to end of term licensing, whole different thing. Perpetual license was supposed to be, you know, okay, this product will always be supported, which is not practical. So it came to a point where, okay, for instance, your phones these days, three years, two years, we'll support you for three years, we'll support you for two years, kind of stuff. You buy once, but three years, two years, that's a whole different thing. And then came subscription pricing, a whole different ball game. Subscription pricing were difficult to handle because you not only just have to maintain that fine balance of what a customer is ready to pay today, at the smallest amount, but you also have to make sure that they will come back and make sure that they will renew their contract. So well, that's a whole different thing. So pricing models have changed. And apart from that, what has changed is a product catalog. Product catalogs are becoming bigger and bigger these days. 
smallest of the companies today have 20, 25 different variants. Remember the time when we used to have one or two phones from every company or five at max. Today, Samsung at least have a hundred something different products available and every single product has at least, like every single phone at least right now has two or three different variants. So the product catalog is so big that it's not impossible for a single salesperson to remember everything. So that's where it all comes down to. So what CPQ basically does is three major things, okay? One, it helps you create quotations fast. Okay, we'll come to that. Second is it makes you uh, help create quotation custom tailored. And last, under the rules of po and policies of the organization. So let's take it one at a time. Fast, we have already discussed this multiple times. We, if you're working with a customer, okay, before I get into this, I do want to point out something very important is that although Salesforce CPQ implementations have been done a lot in B2C, the original implementation of Salesforce CPQ, which was steel brick CPQ, is said to have been created for B2B context. And through for this uh, presentation, we will consider into B2B rather than B2C. Although the topics and the points remain same for most parts, things don't change majorly, but uh, we will consider B2B context here rather than B2C because this is what the product was created for, product was originally designed for. That doesn't mean that B2C implementations cannot be done. I have seen B2C implementation done and done really well as well. But B2C, B2B is the major uh, big ball game for this product. Coming back to what fast would mean, right? If you're working with another organization and if you're going to tell them, you know, hey, let's say I want to buy chairs and Vishnu sell, uh, sell chairs for some reason. Okay. And I go to Vishnu and say, hey, Vishnu, can I have 100 chairs? And he says, he tells me, you know, I'll give you a quotation next week. There is no way I'm waiting for next week for a single quotation. I'll find somebody else who can give me a quotation in two days because I need those chairs right now. Simple as that. So it's a cutthroat environment at, at this point in the industry. So we have to be fast. Custom tailored is if I and Vishnu already have an existing relationship, if we already have an existing relationship, I have to make sure that my quotations respect those. For instance, let's say there is a chair that I always buy from Vishnu and we have come to an agreement that that chair will cost me hundred dollars every piece. Okay. Now a new salesperson comes in. He doesn't remember this point. He doesn't know about it. Let's say the old salesperson that was working for Vishnu, he's gone. New salesperson has come in. He doesn't remember this. He doesn't know about this. I go to him and I say, Hey, I want to buy chairs. And he gives me a quotation of, let's say $130. There is no way I'm buying, buying that. Or let's say he gives me a quotation of $90. He wants to create a relationship. But the thing is we already have an existing relationship. You are unnecessarily losing money at this point. So this is all contracted price. So what the point that I'm making is it it's very important that your quotations are custom tailored for every single client. You cannot just do a generic quotation for every client and just hope that they'll win. You will win the deals. That doesn't that that is not how it works anymore. Okay. And last is rules and policies of the organizations. When you have working with us as a salesperson. And every organization have guidelines under which you have to work at all points. So it is, for instance, let's say there is a chair again, we'll go back to the same uh, example. You have a chair that you buy. Okay. I want to buy and Vishnu sells those chairs, but making price of that, let's say the cost price of it is let's say $60. And there is a very clear mandate that has to be a 30% profit. So that should be that the minimum selling price should be $80. But the salesperson that's working for Vishnu, he decides, you know, I want to create a relationship with this client. I'm going to sell this product at $70 or even 65. Now that should not be allowed in a big organization. Let's say Vishnu has an organization of 3000 people, 4000 people. He might not realize it or they, he might realize it after once it goes into approvals, once it goes into a uh, higher management sees it, once it goes into, let's say billing or shipping, that's when they realize. And that's just creates havoc because that's going to make sure that's going to make it very difficult for the client, uh, for the salesperson to explain himself why his original quotation was bad and why he cannot fulfill those that quotation. You don't want to be in a situation. So your quotation always has to be within the guidelines of the organization, right? So at the end of the day, it's all about improving your efficiency and accuracy of the quotation generation, making sure that your quotation is perfectly balanced for every single client so that the first time they look at it, 
they are like, okay, this is what I need. This is perfect document. Just go and give, give me the printer. Like that's what they are looking for. Now, obviously that's not how that's, that's an ideal world situation, but that is what we always hope for. If anybody has any questions, I'll answer that or else we'll directly walk into, um, uh, do a very quick walkthrough and uh, I'll try to explain you what exactly am I, I'll show you what am I mean, what do I mean by all of this, this stuff. Okay, so I assume either everybody is asleep at this point or uh, nobody has any questions. I'm, I'm, I'm being a very good at explaining everything. So let's, let's go into what the quick walkthrough and we'll keep it uh, short and sweet. So here's, we'll start with, this is CPQ. I have everything installed here. CPQ is basically an app exchange package, so you can install it. There are uh, installation links available. It is easily available for your DevOps, so you can just install it and check it out. The good thing is uh, over the last few years, uh, the CPQ has the number of the amount of information available about Silver CPQ has dramatically improved. There are a lot of walkthroughs, there are a lot of great demos and everything available. So it shouldn't be difficult. It should be pretty easy to do. So let's kick off with uh, something very simple as uh, uh, let's create an account. So let's say I have a new account that I want to create. Okay, simple as that. You come in. This is standard sales. There's nothing new here, nothing complicated, nothing difficult here. Very simple. You come in, you create a new account. But right now we'll work with an existing account because as I said, we have to make sure that everything is custom, right? So let's assume I have this account called survey office. I go in, I have this survey office. I have a new opportunity in front of me. So let me create a new opportunity here. Okay, so I have a new opportunity and I'll say, hey, we want to buy, yeah. We want to buy laptops. Stage prospecting, we are still prospecting this. We don't really have anything right now, but we'll click on save. So we have the opportunity now. Now, one thing that is important to understand in, in Salesforce CPQ design, the, the design, the way it has been created, that every opportunity, every quotation needs an opportunity, first of all. And an opportunity can have multiple quotations, but only one primary quotation, which kind of makes sense, right? If you think from a design point of view, every opportunity has mul can have multiple quotations, but only one quotation can be the primary quotation. And the primary quotation is the one that is considered for higher uh, processes, for approvals and everything. Right. So let's create a quotation on it. So you have a very simple button. You click on new quote. You go in. I'm going to make this quotation a primary quotation. Now, what exactly changes when you are creating a primary quotation? What happens is the moment you click a quotation as primary, it starts to sync the opportunity line items with the quotation line items. Another thing, and this is from a more mostly from a dev perspective, is something that you should know is that this is not the standard quotation uh object the quotation object is not standard there is a, a custom quotation object and everything below the hierarchy of quotation quotation and below quotation quotation line item and everything are custom objects we they are using a lot of standard objects which include price books opportunities accounts and everything but quotation and moving forward is everything custom so let's go into we have a primary here i'll put in a start date let's say first of november is the start date of my quotation, right? So the first of November, and I'm assuming at this point that I'll add some kind of a subscription on it. So I'll do an 18 month subscription. Okay. So let's do an 18 month subscription and click on save. And you can also add end date, whatever you want to do. It just works. Okay. So I'll go to the quotation. And once I have a quotation in place, what I'll do is I'll click on edit lines. Now I have the quotation created. It took me like 10 seconds, right? So I'm going to click on edit lines. And once I click on edit lines, I'll be brought to here. Now, Salesforce CPQ does take into account multiple price books. Why do you need multiple price books? So you could be having, you could be having three different offices, one in Australia, one is India and one in the US. You want to, and all of those cannot be sold at the same price. You cannot say, sell the chairs at the same price in US and India. The purchase power parity is very different in the two countries and it just is not going to work. So you need multiple price books. Here, you can choose those price books. Currently, I have a single price book. I'll just click on standard price book. And I'm going to come to this page. So simple, so quick. Now, until this point, everything can be done in standard CPQ as well. 
right? We have quotation object, we have quotation line object, everything does exist, right? There is nothing new here, but this is where things get crazy. So let's click on add product and open up the, now let's start with, I have 155 products. First thing I should be able to do is search. So let's do a quick search. Let's find those laptops. Let's me find a hardware. Click on apply. Once I click on apply, I have the hardware list here. Let's see, I want to buy one 13 inch laptop, one 15 inch laptop, and I'm going to click on select. I have the two product. It took me a second to find them and do it. Now this is where things get interesting. And this is what we talked about. We were talking about configuration, right? We were talking about configuration. This is what configure is all about. Now in the laptop, I was saying you can have multiple RAMs, right? So I can decide I want to do an eight GB RAM. I can do a 16 GB RAM. I can also do the variant that I talked about, right? Where you can have two 8 GB RAMs. You can do that as well. That's possible. That's not configured in the system right now here, but that is definitely possible. Okay, you can configure it in that way. That's your 13 inch laptop. Now let's go here and configure a 15 inch laptop. On a 15 inch laptop, I'll do, actually let's, let's do this. I want to do a 15 inch laptop. I want to do a 6 GB, 16 GB and a 512 GB hard disk. And on a 13 GB, 13, uh, inch laptop, I'm going to do an 8 GB and a 128 GB hard disk. Let's click on save. We are done. It took us a few seconds to look at first select the products, then select the configurations of that product. It was silky smooth, very easy. We came to the screen, right? The quotation is done pretty much. So let's check a few things out. You have the pricing here, right? You have all the prices here. The pricing of the CPQ, CPU is obviously included in the $1,300, the RAM is already included, but the SSD, there is a $50 additional charge. Okay. Similarly, in this laptop, the 18 GB RAM is not included and the SSD is not included. So the different models have the, the way different, if they work different. Okay. So come back, let's do one other thing. We have, don't have a subscription term yet, right? So the pricing right now, the entire pricing is fixed. There is no subscription here. So let's add a subscription here. So I'm going to go back to the ad products. And this time I'm going to search for, instead of hardware, I'm going to search for a support. Let's add warranties. So I have two warranties, loss and damage, and I'm going to add a warranty of this. Actually, yeah, let's do this. And then click on select. Now there's something that you should see. Now this is where we go into pricing. Configuring issues done, we have selected all the products. It was silky smooth, it was very quick. Let's go into the pricing of this. You have the, you see the warranty products here, warranties here, loss and damage for some reason is zero. Let's add the other one actually. That's going to make you extension. That should have a price on it. Okay, so $10 and $15. Now this is for 18, uh, week, 18 months. What if I change this 18 months to 12 months? I want to just check, right? I want to see what the pricing is going to look like. I'm going to make it it's 12 months, click on calculate. You'll see the prices will change. 15 becomes 10 and the other one becomes 15. Okay. So let's, another thing that I can do is let's say, I don't know the term. I want to do an end date. So let's do an end date. I'll do an end date. I'll click on this. I'll do 2025, 25th. This will be month by month basis. Okay. And I'll do a quick calculate. The pricings will change. Now this is, I think should be around three years. I think, yeah, this should be around three years and the pricing will 10 becomes 30 and this will be 45. I can make it a little better. Okay. Let me try instead of October, let me do December. So that should be somewhere around uh, 38 months, right? So that should do a monthly calculation and that 30 will become 31, 67 and 45, 47, 50, something that regard. Okay. So that's where basically how pricing is working. But that's not only that's not the only thing right there are other features for instance i want to add discounts on some other products so let's say i want to make sure that the laptop 13 i can give a three percent discount on it i can do a three percent discount or i can also do a amount discount a hard coded amount discount so currently it is thirteen hundred dollars i can decide you know i want to give a three hundred dollar discount uh, but i'm going to do a three percent discount on this one and because we have some margin on the 15 inch laptops, I'm going to do a hard amount of discount on USD. And I'll do, let's say a hundred dollar discount on this one. This is a big discount, obviously, but we will do that. You see 3,154 becomes 3,000, $3,015. The discounts have been added. 
simple as that. I don't have to do the calculations. I don't have a calculator in front of me. I don't have Excel sheets in front of me. Everything is here ha happening beautifully. Now let's do another thing. What if I want to do an additional discount on the entire quotation? So I decide I want to do a 2% discount on everything else. I take, took this quotation to the client. Client is like, this is too much. I need some more discount. Obviously you cannot, you don't want to do a discount on a product by product basis. So you say, okay, just because I want to create a relationship with you, you and I are going to decide one thing. And that one thing is I'll give you a 2% additional discount quotation. I added 2% here and I'll click on calculate. The moment I click on calculate, you see the amount changes to 3008, right? Now this is what is happening. Now, one of the most beautiful features of this product that I love actually, and one of, according to me, one of the best product features in this product is what we call target customer account. Now, the, although there is a lot more to this screen than just what I have shown you. And obviously I cannot go to every uh, nook and cranny of this uh, product right now in this session, but what we can, I can show you is this, this is absolutely beautiful. What if I want, I have 3,008 right, right now. What if my client is like, I'm not paying over 2,800. That's the last. So I go in here, I write 2,008 and I click on calculate. The system will do the adjusting on its own at the wherever, whatever products are discountable. It will add discounts to those products. And after adding all the discounts, it will bring the value to 2,800. Simple. Now there is limit to these discounts. How much discounts can be added? There are limits to what it can do. Like if you do, let's say, if I want to do 500, it might not be able to reach $500 because the products cannot be sold at that price. And this is where I was talking about, right? The guidelines and policies of every organization has to be maintained throughout the selling process. So I did put 2,800, it shows the additional discounts. It does all the calculation for itself. I don't have to worry about it. It adds discounts wherever needed. And eventually we reach 2,800. Now the client is happy. He got his wish. He got his additional discount. He got his, the target customer amount. Everything is good. Let's click on. Finally, we are done with everything and let's click on save. You see how fast it is, it just works beautifully. Okay, so we are here now. The quotation is done. Let's send this over to the client. So I will click on preview document. Now, Salesforce CPQ has its own document generation, entire massive document generation uh, process in itself, which you can configure. This document that you're seeing, this PDF right now that you're seeing, right? This is completely configurable. This is not hard coded in any way. This is not being utilized. You, there is no VF custom code or anything. This is all configurable and you can brand it however you want, whatever you want to add to this. Okay. It can be very easily done. Okay. So, uh, the good, and this is very interesting because you don't have to buy docus again, obviously this document generation is not of the Conga or DocuSign level of a DocuGen is, is a whole different ball game. Conga is a whole a whole different ball game. Nintex is a whole different ball game. And that's a whole different thing. But still, it's very powerful and it can do whatever. Uh, most of the stuff that you need for quotation can be done here. Unless you have something, some very specific requirements that just cannot be done using uh, quotation generation, uh, you don't need to. And that being said, if you do, need there are connectors available that very beautifully connect to docugen and, uh, and other products and you can very easily use this data for creating your doc documents there in those docgen products uh, doc docgen products so i have the quotations here let me everything looks good uh, the preview looks beautiful let me close this out okay i can select the paper size i can select the templates and you can create your existing templates and everything and then you click on preview okay close it out uh, let me let's create uh, i have already seen this right let me click on generate document now so i previewed it looks beautiful to me if the, all the details are there the products that we selected everything is there i can select the document generation name here and i'll click on save an email you can directly save an email you can also just do a click quick save everything works this opens my email here i don't want to email right now so i'm just going to close it out okay and in the related list you should be able to see the document 
Yeah, so, sorry, you, uh, you can just see the document here. So you have the code document here in the details, you have all the information, everything is available here, just looks beautiful. You can go to the quotation and on the side, okay, sorry, uh, I think I canceled, that's the reason. Let me um, do this again. Just click on save right now. I'm not doing any email right now, so I'm just gonna click on save. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, so it's there. I should have refreshed my bad. Yeah, so uh, the document is there. You have the PDF here. You can see the document. You can send it over. Now with that, there is, since for CPQ is just one part of this entire game. There's also billing, uh, billing and billing management. Order and billing is basically once you have the quotation in place, what do you do moving forward? You have to convert that into an order, uh, your assets and everything. So you will continue from there. And that is all part of order and billing. And then you also have advanced approval, one of the finest approval packages, according to me, where you can use advanced approval, which is a separate package, by the way, can be utilized to implement parallel, impl parallel uh, approvals in multiple different management. So let's say you have four or five different managements, okay, uh, verticals basically, and all of those verticals have to sign off at the same time. So you can, advance approvals helps you manage that very beautifully. The, the, the view of the approvals is absolutely beautiful. It makes you, it, it looks really nice. There is so much more that you can do in advance approval that is not available in standard approvals. And uh, that's a big part of CPQ as well, sales for CPQ as well, right? So if anybody has any uh, questions around this piece, um, I'll be happy to answer or we can move to the last section of the day. No, we don't have any questions. Okay, so uh, last but not the least, where do you begin? Okay, and uh, again, as I said, there is a lot that can be, okay. So as I said, there is a lot that needs to be taken into account and lots that needs to be learned. Uh, it is a massive product, honestly. It is a small in the context that in, in the world of products like Aptus and Velocity, to me, CPQ is kind of a small product, but since the acquisition by Salesforce, by the way, just those who don't know, originally this product was called Steelbrick and it was bought, I think in 2016 or 2017, I think 2015, 16 or something, I think it was bought by Salesforce. And since it has been bought, there has been massive amount of work that has gone into this product to make this product very well uh, suited for the clients. So the product has dramatically expanded, not only in its scope, uh, it used to be a very niche B2B product and now it is really well suited for a lot of B2C clients as well and works really well for them as well. So the, a lot of work is already going on in the Salesforce CPQ game. And then obviously you have these packages that just uh, very beautifully connect with Salesforce CPQ. I don't know how many of you have seen, there is a product called KB Max. KB Max is a virtual, uh, KB Max is a, they have a blunder kind of code editor, right? You should search it out, it's very nice. Uh, it sits on top of Salesforce CPQ and it adds more value to it. And it's not the only one, there are other products as well in the same ecosystem which add on top of Salesforce CPQ and add values like, uh, there are VR products at this point, which work very beautifully with Salesforce CPQ, where you can just see everything in, in real time and configure the entire CPQ system. Uh, it just is absolutely beautiful. So there is a lot of scope you know, from an ecosystem point of view. Some of the reports talk about Salesforce CPQ, in the, sorry, Salesforce CPQ, CPQ industry, the cloud CPQ industry, some of the top reports in the industry talk about this, a niche industry to be at around 101.5 billion dollars or something around that for a niche product i think 1.5 billion dollar is is a massive industry and we are expecting a 17 to 25 percent year on year growth in this ecosystem which is very nice to see 17 to 25 percent growth on ecosystem and again we have discussed those, the reasons behind it right as the organ company's portfolio of product catalog is going to increase as their pricing models are going to get more complicated. They will, they will need robust CPU systems that can add value. Another very interesting fact of this is that this is one of those ecosystems 
at least in cloud where there is no one clear winner right so aptos is a big player in the game uh, salesforce cpq is definitely a massive player in the game and velocity cpq is another massive player in the game but there are also niche products that have uh, that have their own space so there is no one clear winner there are a lot of different products and they have every product has its has its own uh, goods and bads has its own value but uh, my most experience is with this product and i love this product for the fact that it is extremely powerful for the size of it and more importantly if done well it can add value like you guys saw my entire walk through creating a quotation was less just 3 minutes and the i don't uh, the thing is i have a uh, touch screen in front of me actually and i was working on touch screen for the most parts and it just works beautifully right like i can just click on click 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 i am go clicking on the screen you can have a tab uh, you can have the entire quotation edit line on your tab and that it just works extremely seamlessly so it's what works very beautifully so that being said where do you begin um these are few resources um check these out okay obviously you'll start with your cpq homepage your cpq ebook which talks about why do you need cpq the entire ecosystem they have some numbers they talk about a lot about how much time salesforce uh, salesperson wastes in the cpq life in the report life cycle to make sure that uh, and we, how we can reduce that the entire quote to cash or lead to cash life cycle is very important for every, any organization and any opportunity we can get to reduce the time in that life cycle is always an added bonus to the product then you have the exam guide the, the example cpu specialist this exam in my personal opinion and don't quote me on this but has been seriously nerfed over the last years it's not that hard it used to be one of the hardest exams uh, to be done uh, but it's it's very interesting exam you should check it out this is one thing i do want to add about this exam this is not a developer exam you have to think from a point of a uh, architect if you want to work on this exam you have to think from a point of a consultant it's not going to be about how can i do it is going to be about what are different ways i can do it and more importantly what are the best practices why do you need this do you even want to do this kind of stuff so the questions will be pretty interesting and you'll love preparing for this exam then there is a sales for cpq trail mix there are help articles there is a massive library of information on uh, cpq on salesforce as well as outside as i said over the last few years because this product has been one of the is one of the more mature products in salesforce ecosystem so there is a lot of information already available on the internet uh you don't want me creating uh unnecessary uh, dummy data on internet so lastly there is an installation link and very recently uh platform demos i don't know how many have seen uh, they have had a overhaul of the website and after the overhaul of the website they do have a workshop on platform demos i think that is the most perfect place to, for you to kick off if you want to get into cpq they have an entire guide there where which you can follow step by step it's beautiful i haven't completed that book, by the way the guide so i don't know how um, like it is good i have gone through some part of it and it looks really nice it's very basic it will take you from step to step there is an entire information there so check it out it's it's absolutely amazing okay check that out first that should be a first step if you want to get into it and then there is a study guide that's simplus published i think in january or february last year, this year although you will need a work email id to get that it is available by the way and it is amazing it's extremely detailed over 100 page of information this is actually basically supposed to be a exam study guide if you can get hands on it do do check it out it's really well done uh, simplus is one of the biggest probably uh, uh, it is currently an infosys company now but it is one of the big players and and specially who specialize in cpq right apart from some other organizations so that's that's all for from my end for today thank you so much for joining in uh